hello everyone uh, welcome to my youtube channel in this video i am going to explain the basic concept of molecular dynamic simulation molecular dynamic simulation is a comparably complex technique than molecular docking and i have designed this tutorial keeping in mind the requirements of beginner particularly and the main problem faced by beginners who want to learn uh, molecular dynamic simulation is the computational requirement that means a good computer or workstation which is very costly uh, but i suggest that you should watch this tutorial step by step and develop a concept about the molecular dynamic simulation and once you get access to any workstation so that you can perform your molecular dynamic simulation even if you don't have any access to the any workstation uh, you can learn molecular dynamic simulation and uh, you should learn how to analyze the result and how to uh, to run post simulation analysis which uh, does not require any workstation a simple laptop or desktop is enough to perform the post simulation analysis only a part which is in the run which is very computationally demanding it requires workstation so several aspects are there uh, you should have basic idea about the molecular dynamic simulation uh, before going to perform molecular dynamics or any post simulation analysis or for analysis of the md simulation result so let's start from the beginning uh, the md tutorial on md simulation will be a series of tutorial because uh, several steps are there and i am going to explain step by step okay so let's start from the beginning so what is uh, molecular dynamic simulation so it's a computational technique to model or predict the behaviors of atom or molecule over time in a particular environment particularly uh, the environment is uh, we keep it as physiological environment that means constant temperature constant pressure okay uh, so in physiological condition we simulate or we predict the behavior of protein molecule drug molecule or protein ligand complex or plasma membrane so it's not a real protein or drug or lipid molecule it's the cartoon model but we uh, predict their behavior say what uh, could be the behavior in this physiological condition okay so why do you do simulation simulations are particularly done to save time and resources by reducing the need for extensive physical experiment so sometimes physical experiment is not possible so so we replace experiment with the md simulation okay and particularly suppose if you want to see the protein folding okay so we cannot visualize protein folding so we model and we simulate the protein protein drug protein interaction protein protein interaction after usually molecular docking we perform this simulation if you want to see the transport of different biomolecules across plasma membrane their transport dna protein interaction so these molecular events which are going on within, within our cells to, uh, to visualize them, to predict the behavior of defined biomolecules, we simulate this molecule. The next question is, how do we do it? What is the basic principle of molecular dynamic simulation? How do we predict the behavior of the defined biomolecules? That is the most important question. Okay. So you know uh, a molecule consists of atoms okay so these are the series of atoms linked by chemical bond okay it's a biomolecule and if you want to predict the behavior or movement of this molecule this movement of macromolecules can be obtained from simulation of this molecule at atomistic level atomistic level means we have to predict the movement or motion of each atom okay so if you can predict the movement or motion of each atom the movement or motion of whole molecules can be predicted that's why it's known as atomistic level 
there are several other types of simulation like coarse grain model these are not atomistic uh, level of simulation but but i am particularly explaining the simulation at atomistic level like uh, if you want to uh, simulate the protein ligand complex okay so it will be performed at atomistic level so in atomistic model newtonian dynamics is used to calculate the net force and acceleration experienced by each atom of a molecular assembly that means we have to calculate the force which is acting on each atom okay so if you know the force we can calculate their acceleration through a equation the newton second law we derive this equation f equals to m so let's start from the newton's first law suppose this is a atom which is spherical in shape so as per newton's first law this object will remain at rest if any force is not acting on it so force is required to move anything from one place to another place so if you want to assess the acceleration of this object we have to know the force which is acting on it okay so newton's second law state that acceleration of an object is directly related to the net force and inversely related and inversely related to its mass so f equals to ma okay so now the major question is how to calculate force on each atom and so the forces on each atom can be calculated if you know the potential energy of that atom that means each atom contains some amount of potential energy so if you know the amount of potential energy of each atom we can convert it into force through this equation okay. now the second question is what is the source of potential energy which is present in each atom okay so this atom gain potential energy from interaction with other atom because in a molecule the atoms remain linked with other atoms through chemical bonds like covalent bonds are there and also non bonded interaction like in case of we have see van der waal interaction or electrostatic interaction they are not uh, bonded interaction so from this interaction and bonding the atom gains their potential energy and this potential energy can be calculated using one energy function which is known as force field so force field is the energy function or a equation mathematical function through which we can calculate the potential energy present in each atom okay so let's discuss in detail so in molecular dynamics you know a molecule is described as a series of charge point that means atoms and linked by the bond so these bonds are considered as spring it's like spring okay and when this bond length is at equilibrium that means when it is in resting state so there are certain bond length okay so when the bond length is in equilibrium this atom has no potential energy okay but if you stretch this bond or compress this bond this atom gains potential energy so we can calculate the potential energy by subtracting the bond length from equilibrium bond length so this is the equation u is the potential energy so potential energy which is gaining from the bond length okay so we can calculate the potential energy from bond length through using this equation and this is the equilibrium bond length and this is the bond length in compressed or in stretched condition okay and this is the constant value similarly the atoms gain potential energy from bond angle and dihedral so what is bond angle you can see there is a bond angle this angle can change and also optimum bond angle is there. so this is the equation through which we can calculate the potential energy gain by changing the bond angle okay so when the bond angle is changing the potential energy is increasing and we can calculate the potential energy gain through this equation similarly for dihedral all this interaction are bonded interaction you see 
dihedral means you can see there are four atoms linked through three covalent bonds and these three atoms form a plane similarly there are two sets of three atoms one two three first set form a plane and second sets also form a plane and the angle between these two plane where two atoms are common okay so this angle you can compare it with the pages of book two pages of book and the angle between these two plane this is known as dihedral so this also uh, so there is an also equilibrium uh, dihedral angle okay so when this dihedral angle changes the atoms gains potential energy and we can calculate this potential energy gaining from the dihedral bond through this equation so bond length bond angle and dihedral these are the interaction these are the bonded interaction through which the atoms gain potential energy any change in the bond length or bond angle or dihedral can lead to uh, increase in the potential energy of the atom okay next non bonded interaction is the electrostatic interaction and van der waals interactions are included among non bonded interaction you know the oppositely charged atoms attract okay positively charged and negatively charged atom attract and the same charge atom with same charge they repel so when the two oppositely charged atom or or atom with similar charge they come close they attract or repel each other so this is the source of one potential energy we can calculate this potential energy through this equation okay van der waal interaction usually occurs between uncharged atoms because there are inter uh, uh, atomic interaction or molecular interaction when the atoms come closer they induce a dipole moment and the atom may attract or repel each other depending on the uh, closeness that means if the uh, distance between two atom is less than 4 so uh, is less than 4 armstrong then they repel each other and if the distance is 4 to 6 armstrong then they attract each other usually okay so this is the van der waal interaction so we can also calculate the potential energy gain through van der waal interaction so this is the equation to which we can calculate the potential energy gain through non bonded interaction so what is force field so when the molecules are present in a physiological condition that means suppose a protein molecules surrounded by water molecules ligand molecules is also there different ions are there okay so atoms or molecules are attracting each other or repelling each other they are interacting through bonded or non bonded interaction every time they are uh, the potential energy of each atom is changing okay so this force field or this equation which consider all the uh, possible source of potential energy that means bond angle dihedral electrostatic interaction van der waal interaction okay so this force field means the time evolution of the bond length bond angle van der waal interaction and electrostatic interaction and it calculate the potential energy of each atom at each time point that means it continually calculate the potential energy changes in each atom okay this is force field that means a mathematical equation or energy function to calculate the potential energy of each atom at each time point okay so in summary we can say that this force field energy function is actually calculate the potential energy of atom and now if you know the potential energy we can convert it into the force through a equation i have already shown it the equation through which potential energy can be converted into force in through the equation of newton segen's law we can calculate the acceleration of each atom from this equation f equals to ma if you know the force we can calculate the acceleration that means the motion of each atom and their direction also so uh, that's all for uh, this tutorial 
so in next tutorial i will explain different kinds of force field model okay and we will also progress further in our tutorial we will learn molecular dynamic simulation from the very basic level okay thank you thank you for watching